Hi, my name's Martin Woodward, Martin Woo at Microsoft.com if you want to send me an email. Um, if you want to send me some abuse on Twitter, then at Martin Woodward, awesome. And VisualStudio.com, WAC DevOps is where, I, is where I hang out. Thanks for having me here today. So uh, I work in sunny Northern Ireland. Um, it's uh, 5,000 miles away. I just got a phone call as I was about to come on stage. I've got goats in my back garden, apparently, that I need to go get sorted out. I'm one of these remote workers you hear about, you know. So I've got my trousers on today, so we're all good. Um, I joined the company in 2009 through acquisition. Microsoft bought the, the startup I was involved in. So I went through that whole you know, emotional roller coaster of joining a big company, having worked in a startup, and got to experience what things were like in Microsoft in 2009. And I've been very lucky in that time that I've been able to come in and witness uh, three major changes in the culture of the company, which has been, it's been awesome to see, and it's really been a privilege you know, to work in the company at this time. So the first shift that we had was a, a big one. Um, as I, I work on Visual Studio Team Services, which is our like, online-hosted DevOps collaboration tools, um, for all, all, all the things you need to do. And that, when that came along, you know, that's uh, always on, cloud service, updated several times a day, uh, you know, it has to stay up. We have the whole company on it now, so if things go down, you get phone calls from Satya, and uh, it's not a good time, so we need to keep the service up and running. It's not always been that way. When I first came to the company, I've actually brought it with me, we were building shrink wrap software, like this is how we made money. We put DVDs into plastic boxes and sent them around the world. And that gives a very different mindset to when you're building the software. It's a lot more, you know, waterfalls, a lot easier thing to fall into. Worrying about mean time between failures is something you do a lot because it gets expensive when you need to shred these things um, and get them away. And look, it's still in the shrink wrap. I've never opened it, you know. Um, now, we knew the future was hosted. We knew, we knew we needed to get towards hosted dev tools, and we needed to learn how to work this way. So that's the transition we've been on. Here's a, a picture from uh, Daniel Story, uh, which very much describes the journey, that it, what it felt like riding on the back of a fire-breathing dragon as we were trying to get this software, which was always designed to work on-premise, to try and get it actually... Premises, sorry. To try and get it to work out in the, in the real world. Um, of the cloud. And, you know, that, having said that, Daniel's got quite an idealized image of, of startup life, I feel. Um, having worked in a startup myself, this was his version of a startup journey to the cloud, which is possibly correct. The thing I don't see on here is when you have to keep that bird flying while turning it into an A380 and never, you know, and refuel it at the same time. But anyway, uh, it, beginnings are easy. I'll give you that. Um, so, yeah, that, that whole cloud transition was something we had to do. The next one, as you recognize, uh, an org chart of some of the companies around this area. Yeah, um, and coming in from the outside, the org chart of Microsoft felt shockingly familiar to me as I was coming in. <laughs> uh, this is from Manu Gone, who actually works up at Google just across the street. And this is actually what it felt like, you know, you know, as an insider. There were sort of three major divisions of a company. You had Office and Windows, and then um, I was in sort of developer tools, which is kind of, you know, this little cousin in the corner. And uh, everybody had their own systems. Everybody had their own way of building software. And it was quite um, exciting, <laughs> you know. It was an interesting thing to do. The... Um, as we were doing this, there was really not much collaboration. And I remember as a remote employee during the Windows 8 days, I actually wasn't even allowed to watch videos of demos of Windows 8. I wasn't even, you know, not even mind look at the code. I couldn't look at a video of a demo of it. That's how much things were, were there was walls between these orgs. So no reuse would go unpunished. So we did some analysis, and we actually found out that uh, of the developer time, you know, most of the developer time was spent updating the work item tracking software, saying, are you nearly done yet? Which is quite fascinating. Luckily, Satya came along and he said, right, you need to pile in and you need to actually come in and build this software. You need to, uh, we need to have one engineering system for everybody to use. The final transition was that to open source, which has been a real privilege. Now, Satya gets a lot of, a lot of praise you know, from the, the change he's had at Microsoft. Uh, as you can see, he's gone, you know, the stock market certainly likes him. I just want to point something out. You know, that's when I joined the company, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. 
The only thing I've actually can take credit for is I did create the GitHub org for Microsoft, and now we're the largest GitHub org. You know, we've got like five really major open source projects, lots of open source collaboration going on. It's been a great transition. That meant we needed to get involved in Git, and our Git repo scaling issues are pretty intense. That's Linux compared with the software I work on compared with Windows. Yeah? So we needed to get Git working at that scale. I'll show you how later. But ma majorly, what we needed to do, we needed to do build, measure, learn. You all know that. We needed to learn how to know that. We needed to get good at experiments. We needed to worry about mean time to repair, which meant we needed to not throw things over the wall. As you know, we needed everybody on the same team. We needed to have a live site culture. If something hurts, we have to do it again and again until it stops hurting. The first time we deployed, it took us nine months to deploy again. The first time we went agile, it was six-week sprints, and then it was three-week sprints, and now we're deploying to production every single day. When we're looking at customer SLA time, we need to in look at individual customers to see how well their systems are performing not just the overall service availability of the entire service. What's an individual customer experience like? Does that still meet three nines? And then finally, well, nearly finally, we need to allow the smart people to be able to do their own solutions. We're building the dev tools for the entire company. We need to let them extend those dev tools. We need to let them come into our platform and build upon it because they're, they're smarter than us. You know the old adage, like, the further somebody is from you in the org chart, the dumber they are, you know? That's not true. There's lots of smart people everywhere, and we need to let them go. And then finally, we need to optimize for the people, not the tools. We need to make sure that our tools are the most productive they can be for the people working in them, and invest in the tools to take them out of the way, to, to make it easy for people. Okay. That's kind of a preview. I'm actually going to be talking over in uh, uh, LL20D later on today, and I'm going to dig into all the details there of actually what we did and some of the, the lessons we learned a bit more. But thanks very much for your time, and great to see you. Thank you.